put my hand justice in it. Oh. I usually tear my heart out and you know, lay down in front of me. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Carrying on with the service. I'd like to start with Acts. What I'm going to do today is sort of like one of my pastors that I admire in her own way. She, she likes to preach about all the sermons in one. I'm not going to preach about all the sermons in one, but I might have one or two thrown together. Let us pray. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power has given unto us all things, that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to his glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and beside this, given all diligence, added to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and the patience godliness. All these things we give in the name of Jesus, we receive from God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we pray. Amen. Amen. As I stated, I'll be coming out of at, uh, I was told not to say, I'll be preaching from Acts, and the title today is, Do You understand. I'm going to be coming from verses 30 through 35. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was laid, led to the slaughter. And like a lamb, Silence before his shearing, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life 
is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this about this, say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak and started with the scripture he proclaimed to him the good news and Jesus, good news about Jesus. This to me was a very simple scripture. It talks about how we forget that other people who has not heard of our Lord and Savior who has not heard the good news about Jesus Christ. How an Ethiopian who was high in the administration was said to be worshiping in Jerusalem and was on his way back to Ethiopia. Now this Egyptian, this uh, Ethiopian, excuse me, was the head treasurer of Queen Candace of the Ethiopians. And he had been worshiping and was on his way back home when an angel of the Lord appeared to Philip and uh, inquired for Philip to go south towards Gaza. So Philip woke up the next morning and headed on his way. In his route, he heard someone reading. Because at that time, it is understood that when they read, they read aloud. So he was told to investigate in his own way. So when Philip got to the Ethiopian's chariot, he asked him, do you understand what you are reading? And he was reading Isaiah, and he said, no, not unless someone show me. And he invited Philip up to uh, inquire about what he was reading. And in the Greek language, in Isaiah, Philip is said many times, apparently Philip must have did a lot of talking to the Ethiopians. But he started to explain to him about Jesus being the sheep or the lamb that was led to slaughter. The lamb that said very little in his defense. He told him of the humility and the justice that was not allowed Jesus when he was to be released, that the crowd cried out, crucify him, a very unjust sentence when he's been released. And back in those times, instead of releasing a criminal, uh, they would release a criminal instead. So they asked who would they replace Jesus with. And they said, give us Barabbas. Now all of this is leading up to when they were slaying the Christians. That was one that we come to know as Paul. 
whose name in that time was Saul. Saul would lead all the Christians to prison, men and women, because he at that time he did not know God. He did not know about Jesus Christ. And during that time, what had happened was Peter, Philip, Saul, soon to be called Paul, John, and they was all preaching around Samaria, back and forth here and there. And then Stephen, who had been stoned to death, as well as Philip, who barely escaped with his life. Do you understand that all this affliction going on with Christians, that one stood up and told an Ethiopian about Jesus, about the life that he lived, about the suffering and the torment that he had went through in order to save our lives in order to redeem mankind. It is said that all is to be saved, that God sent his only begotten son that he should save everyone, that no one should be lost. You say, what does this have to do with a Ethiopian, a Ethiopian and Philip. At that time, Ethiopians was outcasts. They was like the Gentiles. They wasn't a Jew, so the Jews didn't care about them. So God placed it on Philip's heart that he would explain to the Ethiopian how to be saved, how to survive this tormented world. So, as he sat with the Ethiopian and explained to him that the lamb or the sheep was Christ Jesus took the slaughter, died on Calvary for the remission of our sins, that he might redeem us. So the Ethiopian and Philip, as they was going towards the border of the Mediterranean, as he got ready to go back to his country, saw some water and said, then could I be baptized? Would it be unworthy for me to become a Christian? Because I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop. And him and Peter him and Philip, let me cover Peter up. I didn't keep getting in my face. Philip and the, and the Ethiopian walked into the water where Philip baptized him. As they came up out of the water, it doesn't say that he at that time received the Holy Ghost, but it said he went along rejoicing in the word. Rejoicing in God, in Jesus. And he saw Philip no more. But Philip went on and he uh, preached the gospel, the good news. Do I 
myself understand. My question to not only you, but to myself is, do you understand that Christ, the one who died for all our sins, was the lamb or sheep in the story. I heard a priestess today say, don't take my word for it. Read it for yourself. And I say all the time, I can give you the word, but for you to understand it, you need to read it for yourself. Take the time and read about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I come to a closing, the word is, what fruits have I bear? Have I bared any fruits for the kingdom of God? I can only speak for myself, I have changed in many ways. So my fruit now is me as I proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel, the word of God. If you would like to join the Crucible Ecumenical Church so we can grow together in the understanding of the kingdom of God, I invite you to come and join the church. Or join a church near you. Mm -hmm.